I don't own a car and don't plan to anytime soon, mainly because I don't need one. For example, this summer when I was interning in LA, I usually took the bus to work. But sometimes I would have to get into the office early before buses started running, so I would take Uber or Lyft. Uber and Lyft gave me the freedom to get around the city without needing to own a car, but also fold in the gaps of public transit when it was not available. This is just one example of why I was inspired to examine how Uber and Lyft can help increase public transit ridership for my thesis this year. With that in mind, I'm Emily Zung, and I am an economics PPA major. Let's get started. So first, here's a brief introduction about my thesis. Three big policy problems when it comes to public transportation. The first is increasing congestion in metropolitan areas. In 2015, the average American commuter traveling in an urban center spent 42 hours in traffic every year. In 1982, this number was only 18. The second problem is declining public transit ridership nationwide. For instance, in 2017, the number of rides taken on public transit fell in 31 out of the 35 major U U.S. metropolitan areas. The third problem is TNC influences. So TNC stands for Transportation Network Companies, which are rights sharing service companies like Uber and Lyft. They have changed how people commute in recent years, but the current academic literature has not reached the consensus as to whether they are substitutes or complements of public transit. Therefore, my research question is, can TNCs increase public transit ridership? My thesis is divided into two main parts, a data section that evaluates whether TNCs are currently complements or substitutes of public transit, and a policy section. So let's start with the data section, which examines how TNCs currently affect transit ridership. So what factors would influence someone to take public transit over another mode of transportation? Let's say you're a very busy person, so you probably won't be willing to spend a long time commuting if you have a faster option available. But let's say you're someone who is low on funds and you can't really afford any other mode of transportation other than public transit. Thus, I use a framework of flexibility, specifically flexibility of time and money, to set up my data analysis. So from this flexibility model I use, I built up my regression. So the de dependent variable for this regression is probability of an individual riding public transit. My key independent variable is whether TNCs are in operation in an individual's metropolitan area when that individual is making a tr transportation choice. So if beta 1 is positive, then they are complements because when TNCs are operating, people have a higher probability of riding public transit. If beta 1 is negative, then they are substitutes. My other variables include number of young children, family income, and hours worked per week, which all tie into an individual's flexibility of time and money. I also include controls for individual characteristics and external outcomes. I also identify three sensitive groups. So I, I hypothesize that these individuals do not currently ride public transit because they lack flexibility but they are more prone to begin riding public transits once TNCs start operating because TNCs allow them to take public transit regularly while still giving them flexibility for when they need. So a special circumstance, uh, for instance, is if um, someone has a child and the sick child needs to be picked up from school, then the individual can request a TNC ride and address the situation immediately, but still usually ride a public transit for day-to-day -day use. So I add the, um, sense, each sensitive group into the regression model using an interaction term like the one bolded here. So uh, I run multiple regressions with the data so each sensitive group appears in its own regression. So the data I use comes from the American Time Use Survey, which, is, which provides annual nationally representative estimates of how, where, and with whom Americans spend their time. The data is taken from different individuals in the United States metropolitan areas from the years 2005 to 2017. So here are some key results. All these results are statistically significant. And the data reveals that TNCs are in fact complements to public transit. Because when TNCs are in operation, individuals are about 3.5 <coughs> percentage points more likely to ride public transit. However, they are not very strong complements because 3% is not a very big number. 
Sensitive groups are negatively correlated with public transit ridership, which does not align with my hypothesis, but having no positive effect for these sensitive groups justifies the importance of creating policy that affects public transit ridership because TNCs in their current form do not have a large enough influence. So with these findings in mind, let's switch to the policy analysis, also known as how TNCs increase transit ridership. So I conducted three case studies in my thesis, but because of time constraints, I'll be uh, presenting only on one, specifically Monrovia's partnership with Lyft today. Uh, the program launched in March 2018 and is the first of its kind and has served as a model for cities across Southern California wanting to resolve their own transportation issues by partnering with a company like Lyft. So, Monrovia is a suburb about 20 miles from here and has a population of 36,000. The city is transit poor and really only has one viable form of transportation, which is the Metro Gold Line light rail. Therefore, many residents there heavily rely on personal automobiles. The partnership's goal is to create an affordable transportation program that incentivizes public transit use in Monrovia through Lyft subsidized rides. Their service area, which is pictured here, covers all of Monrovia and in some neighboring areas like the hospital. Anyone in the service area can take a lift ride at a reduced rate. So, Go Monrovia has, um, which is the name of the program, has three different fares. Classic rides are the most expensive because you reserve the entire vehicle for yourself uh, and potentially. <coughs> Shared rides are Lyft's carpool options, so you might take, you should share the ride with other people traveling along the same route as you. And Monrovia offers a lower fare for shared rides because they cost less for the city and help decrease the number of vehicles on the road and consequently decrease potential congestion. Finally, Monrovia offers a 50 cent fare for any rides to or from Old Town or their Gold Line light rail station. So Old Town is very similar to Claremont Village. It's a popular shopping and dining area that often has a shortage of parking. So Monrovia hopes that TNC subsidy would incentivize people to change their behavior and not drive their cars. Fares are also low for the Gold Line Station because the city's lead leadership wants to deliberately influence behavioral change so residents would become less reliant on single occupancy vehicles and more reliant on shared mobility options like Lyft and public transit. So this policy costs about a million dollars a year, which is the same amount that they used to spend on dial ride. But dial ride ridership has been declining over the years, and so Monrovia decided to scale down that program and reallocate the funds to the Lyft partnership. And the results have been very impressive. So dial ride used to only provide 2,500 rides per month, but now with the Lyft partnership, um, Monrovia is able to provide 70,000 rides per month using the same amount of money, which is a 27 times increase. And these rides are taken by a lot of people of all different backgrounds um, a few times. So it's not like a certain groups of people using the program unproportionately. By reallocating their funds to a program that better fits their city's needs, Monrovia is able to serve their community with the same amount of money as before, which is definitely a win-win. So in the future, Monrovia hopes to partner with Lyft to make TNCs more environmentally friendly. So currently all Lyft rides are carbon neutral, so the company purchases carbon offsets. But Monrovia also hopes to do other measures like decreasing driver idling time when they're waiting for the next ride, or introducing more incentives to use shared rides, and designating pickup and drop off zones. So with the regression analysis and case study in mind, let's conclude with some key takeaways. From the data analysis, we see that TNCs and public transits are currently weak complements because individuals are 3.5 percentage points more likely to ride public transit when TNCs are in operation. Policies that provide discounted TNC rides can address issues like declining transit ridership, limited parking, and more by significantly changing residents' transportation behavior. Monrovia, for instance, was able to provide 27 more rides without increasing their budget. That's it for my presentation. Thank you for your time. And um, I'll pass the mic on to Adam.